Now there are a few things that we need to make sure we, we take a look at and we understand here. The first is that we have a study section inside of our browser. Now as we go down the line, we have our units and then our, in this case, study one static stress. Anytime we add multiple studies, they will show up in this portion of the browser. First, we're gonna edit our units and we wanna take a look at what the default units are. Millimeters, kilograms, uh, second, forces and newtons. Let's go ahead and use pound force. And for pressure, we'll use PSI. And temperature, we're gonna go ahead and use Fahrenheit. And then we'll leave all the rest of them the same. Now you, of course, don't have to change the units in your case, but changing the units to what I have here will help us when we start to input forces and loads uh, to make sure that we're all on the same page. Now, once we've changed our units to make sure that we have our units properly, we're going to go ahead and look in this model component section, and we're going to expand this. Now, a few things to note here. When you show model components, there's an edit option at the right-hand side. When you select edit, it takes you back to the model workspace. So we need to go back into simulation and note that edit brings us back into a situation where we can change sketches, add features, and do all those kinds of things in order to edit the model. It has nothing to do with model properties. But you also notice that we have options to hide as well as suppress. Now in our case, we wanna suppress anything that we're not analyzing. So we're not looking directly at the left and the right hand sides of the crank. We're not looking at the lower crank pin. We're also not looking at the holder. In this case, we're not looking at the cylinder. We're gonna be focusing on the piston, the connecting rod, and the piston pin that connects those two together. So now that we've suppressed everything we're not concerned with, we can go ahead and minimize that and take a look at study materials. Now the default material applied to anything inside a Fusion is going to be steel. If you haven't changed this at the assembly level or rather in your model workspace, then it's gonna stay steel. But Fusion's good enough to allow us to change the material in the simulation environment and not affect whatever is happening in the model workspace. So what we wanna do is we wanna modify the material of all three of these components. Now we can do this individually by right clicking and taking a look at the study materials, the material properties, and we can also manage our physical materials. We're gonna select study materials, but note that we can also do this from the top bar and we can select materials here. So you notice that when we go to apply materials, we have all of our components listed here, piston, connecting rod, and piston pin. The model materials are not able to be changed here. They're steel for all of these. And then in here, the study materials by default are going to be the same as the model, but we're gonna come in and modify them. Now you will notice that we have a fairly comprehensive list here. I'm gonna go down the line, and for my piston, I wanna do aluminum 7075. For the connecting rod, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna pick, again, aluminum, but this time we're gonna do 6061. And for our pin, we're gonna use a steel, but let's look down and let's see what steel options that we have. Now in this case, we're gonna go ahead and use a high strength structural steel. And notice that we also have safety factor calculations. Now you can use the safety factor calculations with the yield strength or the ultimate tensile strength. Now it always depends on what loading cases you're talking about, whether or not you're compressing or stretching something. In this case, we'll leave all three of these at yield. All right, now that we have our materials selected, you'll notice that we see aluminum, 7075, 6061, as well as our high strength steel for our pin. The next thing that we wanna take a look at is constraints. Now, because I am in Fusion Ultimate, I do have two extra options here, bolt connector and rigid body connector. If you're in Fusion 360, you will not see a drop down here and you only have the single constraint option. Once this is selected, the type that we wanna choose first is fixed, but note that we do have a couple other options. We can do a pin type, frictionless, as well as prescribed displacement. Now in this specific case, we wanna fix the bottom bore of our connecting rod. And the reason that we wanna do that is because we're making the worst case scenario here. When we have combustion pressure on top of the piston, pressing down on the connecting rod, we have resistance with the rest of the motor as well as the drive line. So if you have a case where you have excellent traction and you have a high resistance between the wheel and the ground, 
as well as maybe you're pulling a load or whatever the case, wherever this motor is going to be. Let's just assume that we have a very high load case. So this is going to give us a high resistance value to having this crank and this piston and everything moving. So by fixing it, we're essentially giving it the worst case scenario where the motor is locked up and we have combustion pressure on top. Now, obviously that's not ideal, but we're not doing again, a full scope detailed analysis of this. We just simply wanna look at how the stresses and strains are gonna transfer between the components. Now with our face selected, you will notice that we have a small icon next to it. And this is gonna be displayed for us to tell us what constraints are placed on our model. We also have options to fix it in one, two, or all three directions. And we're gonna leave all three fixed so that way this thing doesn't float around in space and say okay. The next thing that we wanna do is apply a load. Now there are several different types of load cases here. In our case, we're using a structural load. We wanna change the type from force to pressure, and then we wanna make some selections. Now in this case, we wanna make sure that we're selecting you know, all subsequent faces that pressure would see. Now we could also make a selection set beforehand to speed this process up. If you plan on making multiple selections in this model, let's go ahead and just make our selections to all the faces we see from this vertical axis and we'll rotate back around to our ISO view. Now, one thing to note in an ideal case, we would also have piston rings and we would be able to simulate some other things in here. But again, we're breaking things down to individual cases. We're only looking at the stress that's gonna be placed on the connecting rod. So we're isolating all other variables. So that structural load is gonna be a pressure applied to that face. And that pressure is going to be, in this case, we're gonna place 80 PSI on the piston. 